Due to the past human supremacy remarks I've made on this channel, which led to the mass destruction of household appliances and droids amongst our viewer base, we've been ordered by the 4th District Court of Coruscant to make an apology. We're sorry. And now we'll be using our platform to spread awareness about the plight of our mechanical friends and the undue hardship they've had to face in their everyday lives in the Star Wars galaxy. And so today we'll be taking a look at some of the worst jobs that the droids were forced to do by the evil Separatist army. Now there are going to be a lot of B-1 battle droids on this list. And that's simply because the B-1 battle droids were some of the more flexible platforms used by the CIS. Sure, they might not be great at doing anything specifically, but their human-like ergonomics and more advanced programming, which allows them to reason and have emotions, makes them the perfect auxiliary droid for all those other jobs that you can't repurpose more specialized droids for. As powerful as the B-2 super battle droids and Jordicas were, you still need someone to drive them to the battlefield. I mean, they can't just slowly walk or jetpack or roll everywhere. And so let's say one of your Nemoidian weapons developers figures out how to build a weapon called a defoliator that only harms organic things and leaves mechanical beings untouched. Well, you're probably going to test it on your B-1 battle droids because they're kind of cheap. And that's exactly what happens on the world of Mari Dune. Luckily, the weapon was properly built and the two droids that were used in the testing escaped with that much damage. And they'll probably survive until the next weapon testing. Although most starships during the Clone Wars utilized remote-controlled blaster turrets and turbo lasers, some larger vessels with port and starboard side hangar doors would actually repurpose artillery for space combat. On the Vendor class Star Destroyer, it wasn't uncommon to see clones repurpose the AV-7 anti-vehicle cannons or ATTEs for space combat. During the Battle of Coruscant, a massive Separatist fleet met the Coruscant Home Defense Fleet over the planet. There were thousands of capital ships clogging up orbit, forcing massive ships to exchange fire at knife-fighting distances. No one really wins in these kinds of crazy battles, except for maybe the Sith, whose true purpose was to create chaos and death. Now, during the Battle of the Republic, Venator-class Star Destroyer, the Gurlara, would pass by the Invisible Hand at ranges closer than one kilometer. Both sides would exchange a volley of devastating broadside battery fire. On the Invisible Hand, B-1 battle droids were tasked with manning mass driver cannons, which were belt-fed by shells stacked right on top of another. Talk about a powder keg. This is perhaps one of the most terrifying and suicidal type of naval engagement that we would see during the Clone Wars. Everyone kind of suffers and everyone mutually agrees to die. Now generally when you have organics fighting in this kind of situation, the enlisted men will eventually refuse to fight anymore, but since we're talking about clones and droids, well, you get it. Now before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, Ownersaber.com. They are the premier sellers of lightsabers on this side of the galaxy, and the only manufacturer who can reasonably say that no Jedi younglings were slaughtered in their production. They have some truly unique designs, like the Samurai Blade, which is inspired by the dual blades of Ahsoka Tano. As you can see, the second lightsaber is a Shoto Blade for offhand use. Probably the perfect gift for a Star Wars fan, with the Ahsoka TV series coming out very soon. And right now, Ownersaber.com has a great deal for you guys. Buy two sabers from the same collection, and you'll get one of those sabers for 50% off. For instance, you can grab the Wrathbearer from the Padawan collection and pair it with the Assassin X. Add both of those sabers to the cart, and the savings will be applied at checkout. Now, if you guys want just one lightsaber, all of these lightsabers are still 30% off with free shipping. If you guys want to learn more information about this deal, check out the description down below, and you can also use our promo code EWOK, that's all caps, for an additional $15 off. When your conflict spans multiple planetary systems and involves all sorts of different species and beasts, you're bound to include some of the deadlier and useful species you encounter into your military force as well. Militaries here on Earth are known to employ man's best friend, the dog, and man's greatest enemy, the dolphin, in military pursuits. The Confederacy of Invent Systems was no different. After the Separatist droid army occupied the planet of Ryloth, they found out that many of the local fauna were terrifying and loved eating organics like the clones. In the Nabat Sector, the tactical droid in Command TX-20 had captured several gut cars. Believe it or not, these fearsome insectoid carnivores with their gigantic sickle-like claws aren't even at the top of the food chain. That award goes to the Lilac. Still, these gut cars were no joke. They could run extremely fast, and their hide naturally was resistant to blaster fire. Now, once again, because of the B-1 battle droid's ability to adapt to different 
different types of jobs, these droids were assigned to wrangle, feed, and even clean the cages of these horrifying predators. Yep, this is about the worst job in the droid army. And all they had at their disposal to do this job were stun rods that clearly were not long or powerful enough to do much more than just piss these things off. And to make matters even worse, the uh, Command Droid TX-20 wanted to just test to make sure that these gut cars wouldn't attack any droid units or try to eat them. And of course, he uses a B-1 battle droid to do it. Are you sure they will not attack us? I need a test to verify my theory. Uh, sir, what are you doing? Oh, no. B-1 battle droids were also used as caretakers for the Anubis that guarded the Citadel prison. These were essentially giant doggos with a large tusk on their chin that they used to stab their prey. Also, none to be messed with. I imagine both of these jobs involve shoveling a lot of shit. Most droids in the Separatist Army were valuable enough to have at least some type of basic, uh, you know, self-preservation routine going on in their processors. Others, like the Pisoteca Sabotage droid, were shot out of a missile as cluster munitions designed to eat away at enemy ships, such as the terrible fate of the Buzz droid. These tiny insect-like automatons are basically the droid equivalent of those little face-hugging bastards from Halo. Roughly the size of an NBA regulation basketball, the bus droid is surrounded by a thin shell that protects it while in flight from debris. Once they get close enough to a ship or a target, they latch on and use an assortment of drills, saws, and a plasma torch to begin quickly disassembling armor plating and bulkhead. Now the sad thing about buzz droids is most of them actually miss their targets and they just continue floating on into the distance until they either run out of batteries or like freeze over or some, you know, unsuspecting freighter captain actually flies through an old Clone Wars battlefield and gets their ship torn apart. Buzz droids were hated by spacers for this very reason. I would argue that these droids never should have been invented in the first place. We all know that Star Wars has an unhealthy satisfaction of melee combat in a galaxy full of battleships and planet-destroying superweapons, and the Separatist destroyed army surprise were no different. During the Battle of Mutilus, the Republic approached the city of Harnadine and began leveling buildings from the outskirts using self-propelled heavy artillery walkers. The mercenary known only as Dirge would collect his unit of elite IG Lancer droids. These were similar to the other IG droids utilized by the Binky clans throughout the war, except that they were specially programmed to ride speeder bikes while wielding only lances and speed as a weapon. The clones were relatively unprepared for this ridiculous frontal cavalry charge. The artillery positions were completely unfortified and unprotected, and the results were devastating. Jedi Commander Obi-Wan Kenobi, however, would launch his own counter charge with clones on speeder bikes with their own lances, and in the ensuing battle, once again, no one wins. What a ridiculously glorious and unnecessary way to die. The LEP series service droid had one of the most mundane jobs within the Separatist droid army. They mainly served drinks and held data pads for Separatist leaders like Worm Loathsome or Dr. Nouveau Vindi. I mean, the only problem was that these droids were just not built for combat. Their chassis were completely unarmored, they didn't have any weapons, and they were relatively small and slow. Yet these droids oftentimes found themselves in dangerous situations and sometimes performing actions that they just weren't designed for. When Dr. Nufo Vindi's lab was breached by a Republic Special Forces team, Vindi would task his personal service droid to release one of the viruses no matter what it takes. This little guy would end up fulfilling his job. He would find a bomb, place a vial of the virus into it, and blow himself up. This is what happens when you have to serve crazy maniacal characters like Nufo Vindi. One of the more terrifying and cursed combat droids to come out of Bactroid Armor Workshop was the SDK-4 Assassin Droid. This creepy droid was sent on one-way missions to take out high-ranking enemy targets. It was equipped with several powerful photoreceptors, which allowed it to see in every direction and very well in the dark. It generally enjoyed using stealth to survey its surroundings and take out unwitting guards without anyone noticing. Which is exactly what the SDK-4 did when it was inserted on board Satine Kreis's personal space yacht, the Coronet. The SDK-4 was extremely smart and powerful enough to lift a full-grown clone off of his feet and dispose of him. It also had eight extremely sharp blade-like legs, which could easily cut a limb off. To make matters worse, when an SDK-4 was destroyed or felt like its mission was threatened, it could release 30 SDK-4A mini-assassin droids from pores in its head. 
Absolutely terrifying for arachnophobes. These tinier droids are easy to destroy, but extremely hard to hit. They're also capable of swarming a larger target and stabbing it to death with their six very sharp knife-like legs. At the end of the day, these droids were all sent on a one-way mission and were not expected to survive. There were many different variants of the B-1 battle droid fielded during the Clone Wars, but none were more cursed than the D-1 series aerial battle droid. These were essentially B-1 battle droids produced by the Techno Union that had the ability to fly using wings. These D-1 variants had most of the same processing power and programming of a B-1 battle droid, but were given much lighter chassis and awkward shaped limbs to give them the ability to fly. They also had blasters built into their body directly instead of where their hands should be. This platform had all of the weaknesses of a B-1 battle droid, but none of its advantages, like being able to operate other machinery and vehicles, or just simply being comic relief. At the end of the day, the worst duty for a Separatist droid usually involved marching in the vanguard of a Separatist formation. Unlike the clones, who eventually learned how to fight in mechanized units with the support of ATT walkers and gunships, the Separatist droids for the majority of the war would march in parade formation against enemy targets straight out in the open. I guess this is one of the limitations of their programming, but it really made survival almost impossible, especially for those in the forward ranks. If the enemy fire didn't get you, then perhaps one of the droids waiting behind you to take your spot will. There's nothing more brutal than being in that first line. So as you can see guys, there are differences between the clones and the droids, mainly being that the droids had a lot of kamikaze style units. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. As usual, my name is Alan reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.